are you? It's uh, Cinco de Mayo. My name is Taylor Morgan, and welcome to episode three of Taste Local. This is the show where we introduce you to local restaurant owners in and around South Florida. Sometimes we'll even take it outside of South Florida and give you the chance to get to know them as people as well as their businesses. We're going to introduce you to some restaurant tours that uh, you know their businesses very, very well. And we'll introduce you to some restaurant tours that you've never heard of these businesses. And those are the ones that are the hidden gems. I can't tell you how many times over the years of owning localdines.com that uh, people have written to me and said, oh my gosh, I would never have found out about such and such restaurant if it hadn't been for you guys. So that's what you're gonna expect on this show. We come to you twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, live on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, thanks to my trusty sidekick producer, Ruby, she makes all the strings happen on the back end and she gets all the guests ready and I could not do it without her. And while we're waiting for, um, for people to, to log on, um, today is day 46 and I see, uh, Andrea. Hi, Auntie Taylor. Is, is Brian watching? <laughs> That's my sister. <laughs> so I got, I have one watcher. It's my sister, maybe my, um, nephew too, otherwise known as my favorite human. Um, uh, it's day 46 of dine in lockdown. Uh, restaurants were closed in, uh, in South Florida or in all of Florida for dine-in on March 21st. So it is day 46 for Palm Beach County and, um, and Broward County and Miami-Dade, but the whole rest of the state is open. And that's what's so interesting about this show. Um, we've got our neighbors to the Treasure Coast, uh, just to the north of us. And so I have two restaurateurs that were actually able to open yesterday and we're going to talk to them to find out how it went. I mean, what, what's the consensus? Was it hard to do this 25% social distancing thing? Um, what, do, what do the people say? And uh, that's a question that I'm going to ask you guys right now is, what do you think? It's May 5th. We're on day 46. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Toilet paper check. Ta-da! When last... <laughs> When last we met, I was down to four rolls, but I went foraging at Walgreens and I found not only TP, but also PT, paper towels. And, and, and I even found hand sanitizer. It was amazing. It was such a wonderful day. Um, anyway, uh, so what do you think? Um, that's, that's the question I want to ask for you right now. Um, and I really can't even see the, the, the chat. So maybe Ruby, you'll help me out with that because uh, I'm looking at a screen that's way across the room. Do you think, no, let me, let me rephrase that. It's not, do you think, how do you feel about going out to restaurants right now? Like I said, Treasure Coast restaurants are open. Martin County's open. St. Lucie County's open. Everywhere else is open. Do you feel safe? Do you feel that you're going to rush out to a restaurant and, and do the dine-in thing? I know a lot of people are, are doing takeout, and this is what's saving restaurants right now. But do you feel safe uh, going out to eat right now, doing a dine-in thing, either inside a restaurant or or maybe I think a lot of people feel a little bit safer um, at an at outdoor venue. One of them we're going to speak to in just a few minutes. Uh, that's the Blue Point Bar and Grill in Tequesta, where they actually have live music. It's like almost like a normal world. Um, I can't really even read. Ruby, can you pop it? Can you fly in? Ruby. I flew in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't see because it's all the way across the uh, it's all the way across the the room. There is anybody? Uh, yeah, we have a comment that we just. Got we have a comment that we just got in from Stacy Kaufman. Yeah. They all start doing the outside eating. Yeah. Outside seating is um, a lot, what a lot of people are saying, but um, one of our guests today, chef Luca Fontana Rosa over at Corleone's in Port St. Lucie, they had a very good night last night. And I know that um, uh, Laura, Laura hood, she sent us some pictures of them going out. Um, to Luca's restaurant. They had a date night for the first time in 46 days. Can you imagine? Stacy says we've been doing takeout and eating on the sidewalk with friends. I don't know if you're allowed to do that. Um, Andrea says, no, we are not eating out. Nope, not yet. 
not yet. Uh, I can't wait to eat out in restaurants, Arlene. Yeah, so I th it's a mixed bag. Jill says she'd eat outdoor outdoors, maybe. Yeah, I think the consensus the consensus is most of your viewers are saying that they'll either do like outside seating or eating outdoors, but nobody has said that they felt comfortable inside yet. Interesting. Well, Laura, I don't know. She, I don't think she's tuned in yet. That's why we're giving a, a people a chance to uh, to log on before we go actually to the guests. Um, Laura and JC had a wonderful dinner. Uh, there are pictures. If you hey, can you check in Luca's um, Luca's little picture box? And there's a picture of a pretty girl and a handsome man sitting at a table. There they are. This was their first date night in 46 days. 45 days because it was last night. It was Luca's first night open. And that's uh, Laura and, and JC. So, hey, they had no problem with it. And um, they still they live to tell about it. Yay, there she is. There she is. That's great. Um, so some people are, are willing to do it. And restaurants are feeling their way through this. You know, it's... Um, it's a, it's a it's a whole new world, and we're all like kind of feeling this way, this, our way through this together. Melanie uh, Robertson over, she's going to be our guest on Thursday. I mean, yes, Thursday, as a matter of fact, she's for Cork and Forks Catering, not yet willing to eat out, as there seems to be a lot of people who are not sanitizing correctly. Okay, we'll talk about that on Thursday with you, Melanie. She is a uh, caterer, so she knows of what she speaks. I don't know of who she speaks, but um, you know, I want to tell you that it, if you feel comfortable, you know, you get you do it at your own risk. You know, M make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you bring some sanitizer. Make sure you're wearing the mask. And that's what we're going to talk about with these restaurant owners. What are they doing for san? You know, for the um, uh, sanitary. The funny thing is, people don't even know this. Restaurants are under huge sanitary measures in regular times. Now they're under heightened sanitary measures. So, I mean, they were really, really clean before, and now they have to be uber, you know, clean. It's a whole different world. It really, really is. All right. We have a really good show. Um, and uh, I guess we're going to get to it because people are starting to tune in. And we have, we're going to start from the back. We have musical guests, so we do this every week because I, I always like to, to um, support you know our mu music industry as well. And our musical guests are Beth Cohen and John Curtis Rose. Beth is actually in the band Boston. Yes, she tours with them. Well, back when life was normal, she was touring with them. She is in the band. If you go to the Boston band website, she's there. Uh, she's an amazing talent. She'll be with us along with John Curtis Rose, who is hugely talented himself. He's an unbelievable pianist, songwriter, um, and, uh, and conductor, and comedian. And they have a, John wrote a song called Stimulus Check. And it's hilarious. Whether you've gotten yours, or not, <laughs> you definitely don't do not want to miss stimulus check with uh, John and Beth coming up at the end of the show. We're going to check in with Ryan Witkowski and Casey Hayes. They are at Blue Point Bar, Bar and Grill. They're in Tequesta, and they were they're actually at the cusp of Tequesta, the north side end of Tequesta. So they, even though I always thought Tequesta was Palm Beach County, they're actually in Martin County. So they were able to open yesterday. It's an all outdoor venue and they have live music. As a matter of fact, you can't find live music anywhere in Palm Beach County or Broward County for that matter, or even Miami Dade. <laughs> the Blue Point Bar and Grill is it. And we'll be talking to them during this hour. We're also going to talk to Chef Luca Fontana Rossa. I'm supposed to be Italian. I should know these things. <laughs> I'm just going to say Chef Luca. Um, he's at Corleone's Ristorante Italiano in Port St. Lucie. Like I said before, they, they're open for dine-in, and they had a very good night last night. Um, but my first guest, wow, he's one of the most successful and hardest-working restaurateurs in all of South Florida. Uh, he's been in the business for a very, very long time. He is the vice president 
of subculture restaurant group. And if you're not familiar with that, you will be familiar with the restaurants inside the restaurant group. That's Dada, that's Kapow, that's Dubliner, that's Howley's, that's Hullabaloo, that's um, Sassafras, new one, that's uh, Camelot, Voltaire, I know I'm missing a few, Respectable Street, Lost Weekend, Subculture Coffee. Yes, that's the subculture restaurant group and I have the vice president waiting for me. Um, you know, so he wasn't busy enough with that. So so um, uh, he decided to have a kid and now he has an infant and he still wasn't busy enough. So um, he decided to get together with a couple of friends and open a taco joint on the, <laughs> on the, uh, on the Jupiter to quest a line. It's called Papi Chulo and Scott Freilich, the hardest working guy in the restaurant biz. It's such a pleasure to have you on Taste Local today. Scott, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Taylor? I'm good. I can't even believe with all those things that you have to do that you actually have time to come on the show today. <laughs> I'm in the middle of it all right now, watching people coming and going. Well, is it a busy day because it's Cinco de Mayo at Papi Chulo? Um, um, yeah, I'm actually surprised on how busy it is. I wasn't sure what to expect, but I mean, it's been going solid since 10 o'clock this morning. Wow. And you guys aren't open for dine in yet. You're still in the Palm Beach no, County you're side. Even, yeah, you're not even able to walk into the restaurant. It's all done through pickup on the outside patio and curbside. Ah. Oh, I just forgot something. Hang on one second. One second. I, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Wait, wait. Don't go away. Hang on. Hang on. Sing. Sing something. Do La Cucaracha. No, don't do that one. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, wait. <laughs> There's a spirit. Hello. Wait, wait, wait. Hola. Wait, hold on. <laughs> ah, here we go. So I have a mustache. So does every other girl. It's day 46. We all have mustaches. <laughs> this is my Cinco de Mayo hat. Are, are, I love are, it. Sh should I do the whole interview like this? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Get in the spirit. <laughs> I just, I need a margarita. Oh God! Yeah, what the hell? I'm just gonna do this. Um, so anyway, are you gonna be able to like keep your keep a still face? Like <laughs> he's looking at like, wait, wait, what? What is that? Does she does she have a caterpillar walking around like her lip? What is that? <laughs> uh, speaking of margaritas, you guys started doing. You, I have to do this with a straight face. You guys started doing takeout. Um, Takeout drinks, wildly popular over at Papi Chulo, right? Yes. Yes. We're offering uh, two different kind of margaritas to go, a single serving or a pitcher for four. And I would imagine the pitcher for four is probably being drank by two and <laughs> for one, especially on a day like today. Yes. Yeah. So, the pitchers are definitely more popular than the single serving. You, Yeah. I, I can imagine. You have been in this business for so long. I can't do this with a straight face. I just. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in this business for so long. I want to definitely talk more about Papa Chulo and, and how that came to be, especially since you're so busy. As the vice president, though, of Subculture Restaurant Group, um, my heart goes out to what you, know, what you and your partners have been through. Rodney, I, I think everybody saw that video when um, he basically broke down in front yeah. of the West Palm Beach mayor. Meeting. And you, you guys had to lay off 650 people right at the start of this. Yes. Um, and what, what was going through your mind? You got, you've, you've been in business, well, I know. How long have you been partners with Rodney? Um, we've been partners for a little over 20 years, about 22 years. Wow. I know Dada is like 18 years old at this point. It's actually this June would be 20 years at Dada. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we opened wow. in uh, June of 2000. Oh, we need to have a major party. And you guys just yeah. opened your doors back up for takeout at Dada, right? We did. We, this is our first week under our belt now. We just opened last week. How's so it we're going? Running. During the day, we're running the H Street Charity. Out of it, which is feeding yeah. out of work hospitality employees and then at the evenings we're doing um, pickup and delivery for Dada menu. 
and Kapow opened today too. Or, or this week? today, um, we, we first came in doing char all the charities, and then when we kind of got it down to where we were able to get a little bit of that under control, then we added the takeout to each location. Okay, that's good because I know that um, one of the things that Rodney said when he was um, when he was at the West Palm Beach Commission or whatever, he said it's not a sustainable model. Doing takeout is not sustainable. But so you didn't do takeout for a while at your restaurants, and and now you changed your mind. Why is that? Uh, well, it's still not. It, it's, it's it's I you know it's not really a a profitable right. program. It's um. But for us, um, I just feel like with, you know, phase one being closer in the horizon, that it's a better way for us to get open and getting the kitchen moving again, getting yeah. there's a lot of moving parts in the restaurant business. So if we don't get up and running and get, you know, our systems back up and running, it's, it's going to be that much harder when they do allow us to open. And I think without the additional being able to support the, with the additional, so we're doing H3, which is feeding the, you know, the out of work employees. And then we're adding the curbside to it because we're really only putting on the curbside and the pickup. We're only employing, you know, on an, on an average night is five employees. But on the actual H3, we're able to put 15 or 20 employees. So yeah, let me say, let me tell That's amazing. I mean, in the middle of the night on March 21st, this was the first day that uh, restaurants were told to shut down, dine in. In the middle of the night, your partner, Rodney Mayo, is up frantic, making a website, coming up with a nonprofit. This was day one. Yeah. And then decides that, um, that he's going to close down all the restaurants and open just Howley's to basically feed out of work restaurant people. Unbelievable. I mean, un he was the first one. There was no, what I was really surprised at Scott was there was no nonprofit organizations, no relief funds for out of work rest for the, for the, in the biz people. It didn't exist. The like actors so fund, the Broadway fund, there's no in the biz fund. Right. Yeah, this was all brand new and just hit us so quickly. So he reacted quickly. He's a, he's an amazing humanitarian. He just, uh, I, you know, I give him credit. I, I He deserves all the credit. I, I didn't think it was even possible to do. And it's all donation-based. It's, it's, you know, zero nonprofit. He's not making a dime off it. And with the um, overall success of Howley's, he was able to then take it to Dublin Air and Kapow and now take it to Dada and then take it to Hullabaloo. So we have currently four restaurants operating under the H3, which is feeding like, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's like 5,000 people a day. And it's, ugh. and it's all donation based. And it's not just um, you, the, the workers from subculture, it's other restaurants. No, you just, it, I mean, there, there's no really way uh, if you just pull up and you say that, you know, you lost your job, it's all the honor system where you're getting a meal and if you if you say you have a family of four we'll give you four meals wow and then you said it's donation based i don't know if we have this um up on a flyer i don't think we do but it's hospitality helping hands.org correct and i just lost correct. maybe we can get it back it is it's hosp hospitality helping hands dot org and um it like like scott says it's all donation based and I can't, the, the amount of meals that they are moving through the subculture restaurants are absolutely incredible. It's something like 30,000 meals a day. I got an email from Rodney. And today is Giving Tuesday, by the way. So we're not asking for tips this week. You know how we've been asking for tips for the last uh, couple of episodes? Um, we had some really generous generous tippers last week and uh, we were able to not only pay for last week's shows but also this week's shows so i'll ask that you um you give a donation to hospitality hospitality helping hands.org there you are <laughs> yep i lost you for a minute but well, you're back <laughs> uh it's hospitality helping hands.org is that correct correct yes okay I was uh, I was tap dancing while you were gone and telling people <laughs> today's giving tuesday and uh that we hope that they will make a donation to Hospitality Helping Hands, um, which is basically going to keep going until everybody's back to work. Is that the plan? That's the plan, yes. Wow. Um, 
I, I, it's unbelievable. It, it really is. So what is going to happen when, when phase one comes to Palm Beach County? I mean, you own like almost all the restaurants in Palm Beach County. So you're a good one to ask. <laughs> what are you yeah. guys going to do as far as like safety is concerned? And are you going to open your doors on the first day? We have some tough decisions to make. There are some restaurants in our group that would be ideal in that situation. We have large outside patios, we have plenty of room, and then we have others that are really tiny and probably the opposite of social distancing. Um, yeah. So we really are gonna kinda take a good look at each location and some of them might not be worth opening under those restrictions and mm. some of them we feel are. So when we get to that, we're gonna kinda, when we cross that bridge, we're gonna make the decision then of which locations that we will launch. Okay, I call the tree, the banyan tree table at Dada, okay? Yeah, that's, that's mine. one of them that would work with all the, the room around the house. So that one will work. I know um, Meisner Park is working with us on expanding our seating into maybe some of the parking areas where we can, you know, have that separation between tables. So those two are probably another good candidates for it. You know, we some of the other ones, we do have some bars that just wouldn't work. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, is this not the weirdest thing ever? I mean, you've been through hurricanes, yeah. right? And you know how, you know, we know there's an end to a hurricane. You know you're going to come back. But what, what goes through, what's going through your head? You're also a family man. You've got an infant at home. You've got a, you've got a million um, uh, employees to take care of. I know what was going on with Rodney. We've seen it a thousand times. What was going on with you? It was overwhelming. I mean, this is all so new to all of us. I don't think anybody ever expected anything like this to hit the world. And it, uh, you know, it was, it was, it actually like really hit me on, you know, our biggest day as the company of the year is, is St. Patty's Day at our Irish pub. Oh, right? that's so right. We've been doing a huge celebration for, this is our 13th year. And yeah, we had truck rentals and tents. We closed down two city blocks. We were you know, leading up to it, there was a big question on whether, you know, it was going to be allowed, if we shouldn't. We spoke to the some city reps and they were, everybody said, as of now, let's continue with it. Uh -huh. And we got about, you know, we had 2,000 pounds of corned beef cooking. And <laughs> about halfway through it, you know, they came and said the city decided to shut the, everything down. So we pretty much lost all the food. And this is where a lot of it was able, Rodney reacted quickly and was able to move a lot of it to the, Hollies and start the charity up, but that's when it just kind of watching it just all get shut down in the middle of an event. You know, it, like you said, I have a baby at home. I got a beautiful baby girl, Lola Penelope. I got a family of six, so I was a little nervous being around a lot of people. Oh, that's right, of course. Lot, what, you know how this was. You're reading the, the news and it's spreading like wildfire, and it's just uh, it was a little scary. Wow. I think it's kind of all settled in now and we're just yeah. through the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel that way too. It's like I I, I, I couldn't sleep. Uh, you know, my business has been down for 46 days, zero revenue. I can't sell gift certificates to restaurants when the restaurants are closed, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, it's like, it's now it's, it's kind of, I've come to terms with it and yeah, yeah. I'm not as Pretty much I, the same way. I'm just, uh, you know, confident that it, we're going to get through this. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. I, not, I, you know, not that's a good thing, but what makes it a little easier is that, you know, it's not just like hurricanes or, you know, just areas, Palm Beach County will get hit. And then you look in Miami and they're driving. This is the entire world that's dealing with the same thing. So we're all in this together. together. Exactly. <laughs> Jinx. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, we rated your um, photo album, just so you know. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to throw, uh, ha have Ro Ruby throw up some random pictures uh, so you can tell us about what they are. R Ruby, there's one with him with a really pretty girl. That's, Okay, could she be any more beautiful? This is <laughs> Melissa. You. That's Melissa, my fiance, who we were supposed to be get married uh, November, which is going to unfortunately be postponed. You were supposed so to get we're... married? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, November was our date, November 1st, but we obviously won't make that. So we're. we're oh, kind of this kind of November. 
Yeah. Oh, I think my last motor Irma. Why did you get no, no, this November, but we're, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that. She is stunning. Uh, my God. You. <laughs> She's amazing. Thank you. And then we had the, the three amigos. Wait, can you throw the three amigos back up again? <laughs> okay. That's Rodney yeah. on the right hand side. Scott's in yeah. the middle. And who's on the left? That is Dave Robinson. That is my partner over at our nightclub, Honey, in Delray. Ah, uh, okay. As a matter of fact, your partner's at um, at Papichulo. And what does Papichulo mean? Papichulo is uh, is almost like a slang phrase for um, like pimp daddy in different cultures. Um, in yeah, it's a little different from like Puerto Rico to Mexico to the more of the Latin, but it actually refers to like a fun name of like a pimp daddy pimp my taco <laughs> oh wait a minute that didn't sound right <laughs> but your partners at papi chulo are cleve mash and angelo from lenora's correct i don't know if how many people know that so you've got three major operators and you guys were supposed to open a royal palm uh like right around now um correct. and royal yeah. palm is still <laughs> happening right yeah, we were uh, we were so far into. I mean, we've been planning this for the last seven months. Um, you know, we were about probably sixty percent built out. Uh -huh. We had so many deposits down that were non-refundable. So we had a difficult decision to make: do we continue or do we pull the plug? And we just felt like, you know, we were all confident that we would eventually get through this. We have. Um, you know, we had a great landlord that was willing to work with us and help us during the downtime. So we decided to make the commitment and say we're we're in it for the long haul, and we are uh, we are gonna we you know we don't really have a date, but we're gonna build it out and then we're gonna kind of get it ready and we're gonna sit back until we can have one big grand opening and when that time is comes, we're gonna throw the biggest party in south florida i'll tell you the the western Ho community without are... masks and social distancing yeah <laughs> and plenty of margaritas the western yeah. communities are in for a major treat anytime you drive by papa chulo on us1 on the tequesta jupiter line no matter what time of day whether it's 11 o'clock in the morning or four in the afternoon or night at night there is a party going on inside outside in the back where there's with ping pong and another bar out. Such a great place and I can't wait for it to get back to normal again. And, uh, but for today, for pickup, um, you're doing a, um, you're doing a uh, uh, Cinco de Mayo special. And Ruby, I think we have the menu for that. Want to tell everybody what you're doing for Cinco de Mayo? Well, it's been overwhelming. So unfortunately we have sold out of that oh, package. Take it down. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm blessed to be able to say that. Uh, yeah. it's, um, it's just we have a small kitchen and we could not, we had, we put that up and within the first day we had 200 orders. Wow. And we know how many tacos that are. We make all of our shelves fresh. So I think we have some pictures uh, of that too. That's a lot of pressing, hand pressing the masa to make the shelves. So we were to capacity. So we couldn't do, uh, couldn't physically do anymore so we've kind of pulled the package and now we're um we're taking call in orders but you know we're uh we are busy it's been non-stop all day which I'm, I'm so appreciative that the community has thought of us and it's picked up and be able to still be able to celebrate Cinco de Mayo at home and that's great we're happy to be able to supply the great food and drinks that's great. That's great. Papa Chulo located on um, US one on the west side of the road on the Tequesta line. Scott, thank you. Thanks, Subculture, uh, Vaughn and Rodney and all your partners for, for everything you've done for the community over the last 20 something years. I know Rodney's been in the business since the 80s with Last yes. Weekend and Respectable Street. I mean, he doesn't look that old. <laughs> But um, he will when this is over. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still out there every day. Hospitality he helping hands is the way for you to help subculture, help the community and people who need food right now. Hospitality helping hands.org. They're taking um, your donations. And um, you guys, I, I've said this to you before. You have the Midas touch. Everything. I forgot sassafras, too. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, <laughs> 
everything you touch turns to gold. And I, I made that continue for you guys for a very long time because you've touched so many people in oh, South Florida you. in so many ways. And, and it's, you're really good people, all of you. Oh, so thank, thank you. We couldn't have done it without the support of the community. So it's, we're very, very grateful. All right. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> Tip of the hat to you. <laughs> I wish we can do a shot. So that's just, a little bit of Irish and Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> 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 Scott Freilich, thank you so much for being on Taste Local. Thank you. Take Taylor. care. Take okay, care. Bye. All right. Uh, a lot to talk about with Scott because he's, you know, he's been a part of the community for so long with so many restaurants. But we also have a lot to get to. My name is Taylor Morgan. Um, I'm the owner of LocalDines.com. You're watching Taste Local. Next up, we're going to talk to two restaurant owners who actually got to open for dine-in yesterday. But before that, um, there was an interesting class that happened uh, yesterday up on the Treasure Coast. Uh, the Restaurant Safety Association put together uh, sort of like this little course where they were going to teach um, servers on the proper etiquette for social distancing. So we actually, a friend of mine was up there, they got the tape. So Ruby, could you just roll the tape to show what the social distancing from the restaurant standpoint would be? Yes, that's the, the Restaurant Safety Association, which I just made up, actually. <laughs> You've probably seen that going around on Facebook. I just thought it was hilarious. It's not really true. It's, um, it's probably in Great Britain or something. But restaurants are open on the Treasure Coast. And it's exciting for restaurant owners. It's, it's, it's a whole different weird avenue. And uh, one of them is uh, Chef Luca Fontanarosa. From Sicily, as a matter of fact, he owns Corleone's Ristorante Italiano in Port St. Lucie. Chef um, was actually in, in the IT world for a long time, but something about being Italian, you, you know, your roots are in Italy. That's where food is. That's where wine is. That's where cooking is. And I'm seeing, uh, I think my uncle Bill Ayetzi, I-E-Z-Z-I, -E -Z -Z we're from the Abruzzi region of Italy. <laughs> so Chef Luca and I probably have, you know, maybe relatives or something over in the old country. Let's find out. Chef Luca, welcome to the show. Um, let's bring him in, I think. Is he there? Okay. Hey, Chef. Bonjour. Ciao. Ciao. How, How are you? Are you? So today is day two. You were open last night. I want to know we were all open last night. night. Yes, we fired the engines. You guys, last week, when you announced the fact that you were going to be opening on Monday, May 4th, you had a whole list of, you know, the precautions and how you were going to do it. You know, a lot of restaurant owners I've talked to really don't even have a clue yet. Um, but you had the procedures and the fact that you were going to have this many tables inside and they were going to be this far apart. Um, why don't you tell everybody what the safety measures, because what I'm seeing is people are still afraid to go to a dine-in restaurant. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, I spoke to many of our guests last night. Um, I have to say that the majority of them um, told me that they were comfortable in eating uh, inside. Now, I don't know whether it's our restaurant or they will feel comfortable in our restaurants and know if they were aware of the measures that I took as far as sanitizing the whole place and whatnot. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised to hear that because it means that uh, they themselves are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, that there is hope that uh, you know the world is not going to end because of this virus. Uh, we just have to be cautious and uh, uh, do what we're doing and everything will be okay. 
So you have a small restaurant in the first place. You guys opened um, July 2018. Is that correct? Yes. So yeah. you, you're fairly new to the scene. You've only been through one summer. It, what 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 people? And I'm not sure if they know. I mean, you guys, restaurant owners, depend on the period from November to around Mother's Day. That's where you make your money. Then during the summer, you like you hold on for dear life. <laughs> but but season ended early. It ended two months early. However, I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised, not surprised, um, pleased that you made it, even though you're so new, because that's really, really hard to do. You must have some really heartfelt and heavy support from the community and your food must be freaking fantastic. I haven't been there yet, but <laughs> that's really hard to do is to close your doors when you're so new, you don't have a ton of money in the coffers. I would imagine after only being open a year. Um, that's true. You, that's true. I, you made it through what is the unimaginable. And do you think you're going to be able to make it through the whole summer? I have reasons to believe at this point that everything will be okay. Um, I'm just thinking that we have managed to uh, overcome this crisis. And at this point, and it was certainly something that I would probably say happens once in a lifetime, something yeah. of this magnitude. Yeah. Uh, if we have managed to do well despite the crisis, then I really do think that we have that our business model supports carrying us through the summer and the summers to come. It's good. So I, I believe I'm hopeful that we will be OK. I like I said, I was so pleased to hear that that you were still you coming out on the other side because when this thing, like I said to Scott, when this thing started 46 days ago, um, I, I didn't know how many of the little guys were ever going to make it this far, but everybody kind of pivoted, you know, everybody switched gears, you, you know, and that, and that's innovation and that's entrepreneurialism and that's uh, a good product, a quality product and a, and a base that loves you. So that's what that's what helps helps the little guys to make it through this. Now you have a relatively small restaurant. How many how many seats are are normally in your restaurant? Uh, we can sit fifty two. Fifty two. So twenty five percent of that is what? <laughs> Two uh, 16. people. Sixteen. <laughs> so it's four tables. Yeah, we have uh, we have. Five tables inside, but we only allow for four tables to be seated. Uh, and, we use the fifth one more for arranging the tables just in case that there's bigger parties, okay. like last night. And so, and the way you're doing it is you're doing it in seatings because walk-ins might be weird because there might not be a table that have to wait because you'd only have four tables. Yes, uh, last night we were lucky uh, to be able to accommodate a couple of walk-ins, I believe. But oh, Hang I'm... on. <laughs> I'm on the air. Got to go. Hold on. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was distracted for a moment. No problem. Um, no, we uh, we were able to accommodate some walk-ins, a couple, yeah. I believe. But uh, like I posted on my Facebook page, we will um, We'll treat walk-ins, you know, on a uh, um, is something available basis. So that means it's reservations only that will allow us to plan accordingly, yeah. making sure that social distancing is uh, respected and followed and all the rules that I put in place at my restaurant are uh, also followed. So, so you I were... forget to tell people that that, that are walking in that they cannot come because it is not safe and they would and also how, jump about um, to turn the business safety. away. Yeah. Yeah. Um I can see a little bit across the street a screen. It's uh Olympia Zuccarelli who owns Zuccarelli's, which is uh, one of the longest standing Italian restaurants in West Palm Beach. She says to you, That's amazing. 
um, happy hearing this. So I'm not sure because you're up in Port St. Lucie, but Zuccarelli's has been around for, I think, about 40 years here in West Palm. And Olympia, we'll have you on sometime. Um, so, so, you know, I, what I love is that the restaurant community is all coming together. There's no, you know, come to my Italian restaurant, go to you. There's no, you're, you, everybody's, it's a whole unity thing. You're all in this together, right? Uh, that, that is true. That is true. That has been um, some sort of brotherhood that has been established, yeah. you know, to help us through this crisis. Uh, I've had restaurant owners uh, call me for some advice. I call some restaurant owners for advice. I said, what are you doing uh, today and how you plan on overcoming this and whatnot? And uh, we exchanged ideas on how to yes. uh, on how to go on, how to move on from this, and, and and make the best of it. And I have to say that it's also something that's really good because uh, it helps the restaurant community uh, yeah. to grow also under that aspect. Yeah, um, Laura was there last night. She waited for forty five days to have a date night with her husband JC, and uh, we're gonna put put up some pictures. Ruby's got some pictures that we're we're just gonna we went through a couple of photo albums, and we're gonna throw up some random pictures, and we'll just talk about them. Okay, so there's Laura and JC first Laura's night out. Okay. How did you feel when they came in and you had people in your restaurant? Back it, was, it was, no, it, it, it was very strange. I was certainly happy to see uh, my friends, uh, welcome them back personally. Uh, but it was also surreal because yeah. I'm used to have uh, a restaurant full of tables and full of people. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's strange to see a restaurant dining room that is, pretty much empty and, and it feels almost like uh, you're in your dining room at home yeah. and you say, okay, hey, come in for a quick dinner, a quick bite. So it's it, it still doesn't feel um, like operating under normal circumstances. We're certainly aware that there's still that something that is going on and that we need to be extra careful. Well, it's phase oh, one, so we take baby steps, you know, because we want to be careful yeah. and, um, you know, people are still wary about going out. However, there are some that are like, hey, I don't care. I can't stand my husband anymore. I'm leaving the house. I'm going to go eat out somewhere. So they Yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> we, uh, we had reservations booked literally minutes after the governor announced that uh, we were going to reopen for phase one. Wow. Uh, I believe we booked our six seating 6 p.m seating and within one hour of that announcement awesome. so that was that's saying something and i and i really think that's really good for the future because if if people you know and, and i say you know just everybody be careful you know practice safety whether you're the consumer or of course the restaurant owner and you have to be under strict standy uh, safety measures anyway um but just you know be safe, but I think people are going to be ready, especially they're going to be ready to support local coming out of this. And if you have great food and you're a local, you're, I think you're going to be in a very big winning position. And speaking of great food, let's show some of the food. Um, you do homemade gnocchis? We do. Ah! Like that. <laughs> you do. Oh, I... My grandmother used to teach me with the fork and, and also with the two fingers or the thumb. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling it out. Oh, we have to have a gnocchi making contest. Um, Ruby, can you show us some of Luca's delicious uh, food? Oh, okay. Tell us what this is. So, okay. So that one there is uh, the fettuccine. It's a vegetarian dish. Uh, fettuccine with the... Uh, uh peppers and asparagus and there's um i believe the uh uh yeah the lemon it was something that i all my specials are created literally the same day that i put them out 
Uh, and, and it always happens as I'm hungry and I want to eat something and I'm bored of eating always the same thing. So I'm like, what can I do today? I feel like eating something different. So I start putting things in a pan and saute it. And then I add some pasta to it and I taste it and it's good. And I'm like, <laughs> I think our guests will probably like this stuff. So I, that that's how these dishes are created. And do you go more Northern Italian or Southern Italian? You're from Sicily, so... Uh, yeah, born and raised in Sicily, but in our restaurant, we spend across the region. Um, we we do uh, northern dishes like the risottos, the veal Milanese style. Oh, wait, uh, I think we have a picture of the veal Milanese. Um, Ruby? We have Don Fomenta. That's not it, but that looks good, too. That's the, the which is this, the Riggies? That's the, that's the penne with the bolognese, ragu. Oh, that looks so good. I yeah. want now. There we go. Oh, arancini. Oh, that's the arancini. That's typical from uh, Sicily. Arancini are rice balls. And there's the They're risotto. What's that? Wait. No, this one here is actually a burger. It's the Corleone burger. <gasps> yeah. Something that's that I really also... Good. I. It's interesting. I had uh, one of our regulars come in and said, it would be interesting if you could do a burger for takeout. I think people would uh, probably appreciate that because not a whole lot of burger places are open and there's yeah. really not a whole lot of uh, good burgers around right now. So why don't you do something? I said, I don't know. It's not really Italian, so but I will think about it. <laughs> so I came up with a burger and, you know, it was pretty successful. I made, uh, I think, like 30 of them and they sold out. So Good. for a Italian place selling burgers, I mean, that's, <laughs> that was certainly You're different. doing something right. You're doing something right. So what, yeah. Um, yeah, Mother's Day is coming up. Are you already sold out for Mother's Day? Uh, yes, we pretty okay. much are. Uh, there's still room for uh, some tables, um, I think, at Four and uh, seven thirty, okay. uh, but the six looks like it's already booked. So uh, I'm thinking about some specials to do on uh, that weekend. I haven't thought about it because so much has been going on lately. Um, I but I will post an announcement on my Facebook page okay. in a day or so. Okay, and we have your website. It's um, it, uh, Luca is from uh, uh, Corleone's Ristorante Italiano uh, in Port St. Lucie. Open for dine-in now, also still open for takeout, and uh, by reservation only, following very, very strict standards. The, the website is here, uh, CorleonesRestaurant.com. But you're very active on your Facebook page, always letting your people know what's going on, posting pictures and, and messages right from you. And, you know, chef-owned is the way to go. Local is the way to go. And that's why we're here. And I wish you all the best. And your second anniversary will be coming up in July. And I will be coming up to eat gnocchi with you. Great. <laughs> that sounds great. If I may say just something before I go, I Absolutely. want to, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported us through this coronavirus crisis. Uh, you can have the best food in the world, but if you don't have, um, the people that will come and they are loyal to you, then there's no way that neither I or anyone else would have made it. So thank you everyone for supporting us and for supporting the local restaurants. Very well said. Thank you so much, Chef Luca, and good luck to you and congratulations on a job. Very, very, very well done. Thank you. Take care. Ciao. Bye. Uh, Chef Luca Fontana Rosa from Corleone's Ristorante Italiano in Port St. Lucie. Look them up on Facebook, find them on, um, uh, on the web and go support some really intensely great Italian restaurant, uh, Italian food. Okay, let's move it back down south to the north end of Tequesta, which I thought was in Palm Beach County. It's actually in Martin County. There's a place called the Blue Point bar and grill. You may never have heard of it. It's kind of fairly new. However, Ryan Witkowski, you probably know his dad's restaurant. 
actually he's worked with his dad at his dad's restaurant for many, many years. Finally went off on his own. Uh, his dad's restaurant is in Abacoa in Jupiter. It's called the Stadium Grill. It used to be called JJ Muggs. And Ryan and his brother and his dad uh, worked together for many, many years. So he is no uh, newcomer to the restaurant business. What he is a newcomer to is running a business during a you know pandemic. <laughs> but they were able to open yesterday. It's an all outdoor venue and it's right on the water. It is just phenomenal, but you wouldn't know about it if you didn't know about it. This is one of those places you're going to learn about on this show. It's called the Blue Point Bar and Grill. I have manager Casey Hayes and owner Ryan Witkowski on with me now on Taste Local. Let's see if we can't shoot over there. Hey, Casey. Hi, I hear you. I think I hear music. I can hear music. Hi there. How are Hi. you? Okay, we're, we're gonna have to do our little interview separate because I come up to Ryan's shoulders. So I was gonna say he, <laughs> we he's can't very, be in the same frame at the same time, but he's right here. Very tall, tall dude. Yeah, and where is he? He is right here, Ryan. He will, there he's, he got, is. he's got the TV backwards or something like that. Um so Casey, you guys opened yesterday. We did. And it's all outdoors. It's, what was the consensus? Were you jammed or were you were people afraid? I don't think people were afraid. I think a few people were afraid, which is probably why we weren't jammed, but we were very comfortably busy. Everything's nice and spread apart. So no one has to worry about being too close to each other. And, and the food. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, no, we're limiting the amount of people in the pool so that, you know, it's 10 people at a time. So that way it follows the social distancing guidelines. And if, if you just th thought you heard her say pool, you're absolutely right. You're not at a hotel, if it, but you have a pool here at this venue, mm -hmm. an actual pool and a bar and a stage and on the water. And there's Ryan. And Hello. <laughs> You guys are one of the only places, I mean, I think the only place from Palm Beach down to Miami that has live music. It's Things are normal again almost. We're trying. We're trying to keep the music alive. We're very much a, you know, a live music venue. So as soon as we were allowed to open, we, we set it right up and we have music every day and every night all week long. And I'm sure it will continue. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Great. How you doing? Good. I was just talking about uh, your dad a minute ago. I don't know if you heard the intro. Um, I, I I want people to know he is one of the nicest guys. Dennis was Mikowski uh, from uh, over in Abaco at Stadium Grill and formerly PJ Muggs. Uh, we've been working with him for a very, very long time. You're both extremely tall people. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Your dad had actually played professional basketball at one time. Yes, played against the Harlem Globetrotters with the Washington Generals. He played yeah. against the yeah, with well, the Washington Generals. The reason you've never heard of them because they sucked. So. <laughs> oh, and five hundred career record against the. Uh, he said they're oh, and five hundred. <laughs> yes. But he got to play against the uh, the Harlem Globetrotters. So, I mean, your your dad is just a really cool guy. And while he could be home, you know, letting you guys run the stadium grill, he likes going into to the restaurant. He likes keeping busy and, you know, and, and being with the people and being out amongst them. How is he feeling through all of this stuff? Yeah, he misses work. Um, you know, he, he was struggling there for a couple weeks, but I – took over one of the rooms in his house, brought in the 16 cameras, mounted them on the wall and set up an office, brought over the file cabinets, brought in an internet phone. So he gets to still feel part of the action every day, answering uh, his house. How's his health? Is he okay? Yeah, health is good. Okay, um, good. You know, he's been quarantined, he's got diabetes, 73. So yeah. told him to stay in and uh, you know he's been doing a good job. He's a super guy. Well, I, I, I thank. I mean, I, I applaud you guys for for you know, yay! One of the first restaurants to be open, and um, and I think everybody's just like we 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 want to get back to normal again. We want to go out and drink. We want to go out and eat. We want to watch live music. And there is no other venue except for the Blue Point Bar and Grill, you know, that's that's drivable from 
the West Palm Beach area. There's nothing. Yep, the first, the first one leaving the county. Um, you know, we're, we're coming back full, full strength. I've got 14 bands this week. I might do 21 next week. Um, you know, we're, we're ready to rock and roll up here. Having a little hard time, hard time hearing your audio, but he said 14 bands this week, maybe 21 next week. And um, so what, what, what's happening at Blue Point Bar and Grill is not only are the servers back, actually you did a, um, you did a job fair on Saturday. So you, are you still hiring? We are still hiring. We had a job fair with about a hundred turned out. Uh, we hired about 25 new employees, a uh, bunch of the, you know, Palm Beach County restaurants where people were laid off, um, you know, temporary positions until Palm Beach County gets back open and possible full, full time positions, you know, depending on how the staff does here. Okay. Yeah. We're having a hard time with, with, uh, hearing his audio, but he says that there, there's definitely still hiring. And but the, the cool thing is not only restaurant workers are, are able to get back to work at the Blue Point Bar and Grill, but musicians, my God, people forget that the musicians haven't been able to work for 46 days either. So yeah. they must be beating down your door, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they're anxious, they're anxious to get back. They're anxious to get back. Um, they're not going to do full bands. You know, we're going to try to start off with single music uh, groups. You know, we don't want to create a big crowd where everyone's congregated together, dancing together. We're going to start with the, uh, you know, the singles, possibly some duos on the weekend. Good. And uh, we'll see how things go. Good. So uh, it's an outdoor venue. So you're actually, you don't have to uh, work at 25% capacity and people might not know this, but you do have to do social distancing with the tables. What does that look like? Yeah, so all the tables are marked X on the floor. They're all spaced uh, six to eight feet apart. And, uh, you know, no groups larger than 10 can sit together. And the whole restaurant's spread out six feet apart. Okay. And Casey, what are, um, as far as the servers are concerned, I, I, how, what are the safety measures? Are, or are, are people kind of letting their guard down at this point as far as customers are concerned? Do they... What are, what, are, what are the patrons, you know, acting like? Honestly, I think everybody's just happy to be out and about. I think they feel really safe here because there are no walls holding anything in. We have sanitizer on the wall. We have sanitizer sprays everywhere. Every chair, every table, every menu is wiped down after it is touched by absolutely anybody. We're taking our employees' temperatures as soon as they get there every day. So we're doing, we're doing every safety precaution that you know, we know to make sure that everything's nice and clean and everybody's healthy and no one has anything to worry about. Wow. And if they do, we encourage them to stay home or maybe sit outside of the fence a little further away from everybody. We have Adirondack chairs so they can absolutely sit with, you know, maybe a couple people that they know and that they feel comfortable with and they're, you know, they don't have to be too close to anybody. Right. So, uh, Ruby, can you throw up some pictures of uh, what the place looks like? I don't know. Are you on? Uh, oh, there's the fish dip. There is the smoked fish dip. This actually comes out of Jensen Beach and it's our smoked mahi dip. So not only, you know, we're shopping local and selling local local as well. That's one of your most popular is a flatbread. That is the lobster bruschetta flatbread. Ah! Popular items. It's got brie cheese. It's got mozzarella. It is insane. That looks amazing. And of course, the Mahi Tacos. Big seller. Big, big seller. This is probably one of our most popular items. It comes grilled or blackened. We've got the mango salsa. We've got the jicama slaw. And that's oh. topped in the cilantro vinaigrette. It is just to die for. Okay, Here's so this is the one that's with my heart. It actually comes two lobster rolls? Two lobster rolls per order. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how much? That is $25 for two. And a oh my God, that is such a good price. This Boston girl pays has paid up to $32 for one lobster roll. Of course it was on the Cape, but two, those are good size lobster rolls. Two of them. They are very large size. portions. And oh, then there we go. We've got calamari. We've got our bacon wrapped scallops. We have our jerk chicken. 
There's our peel and eat shrimp in the middle. And I believe that's a burger by the in between the Bloody Mary and the Moscow Mule. That looks like normal life again. It is. It is. We're so excited to be back. <laughs> and there's a little bit of everything. Yeah, turkey and, sourdough. And, there's a buffalo chicken salad. And a hammock in the background overlooking the water. I think we have a picture of the pool, too. Or maybe uh, not. We oh, very well may. Minute. If not, I know we've got our social um, social media coordinator here somewhere. So I'm sure she's listening. She may, able to, may be able to pop a picture of the pool up for you. I don't know if she'll be able to do that. Uh, she'd have to log in or something. But yeah, can, can you like take the, the computer and turn it around? I mean, we're... I can. I'm kind of tucked away, but give me a minute and I'm going to yeah, go. Okay. I'll show you. We've Look got, the, we've got right. Michael Boone here playing music for us. We've got a nice little crowd going on. Good. Here we go. Why don't you tell people because All you right. guys are here. She can't hear me. There we go. There we go. And there's a we've got the ball. Hidden gem, I'm telling you. Um, it's a little bit hard to find. That's one of the things. Casey, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, we're kind of a little hidden treasure down here. Yeah. No one really, you know, those who know, know. And then they tell their friends. And I, quite honestly, had never been here before I started working here. No. Luckily, I had a friend who knew about the place, and she's like, just walk down the path. Then you'll see it. <laughs> it's set back and it's on the water, but you don't even know it's there. So it's right on US 1. Oh, gosh, I don't have the exact address with me, but you probably uh, do. 701 US 1. Okay. Um, so it's just north of County Line Road. And how I describe it best to people is that we're in between Tiki 52 and the Waterfront Inn. There you go. Everybody knows where that is. Around forever. Everybody but this is our two year anniversary this week, so we're very excited that this was our the week that we get to open back up. Feel very blessed and lucky. What are you guys gonna do for um an anniversary party? I we're partying all week long. That's why we have <laughs> so much music going on. All week it's a celebration of two years of Blue Point Bar and Grill. Well, I want people, you know, we were going to do the margarita, but we ran a little long today. We always run a little long. Um, so we're not going to do our, our our lockdown libation today. But I want people to go to Blue Point Bar and Grill and get one in their hand today because it's Cinco de Mayo. And if you feel comfortable going out, everything's cool over there. You know, and the people are social distancing and you can't sit at the bar. You had to take out all the seats at the bar, correct? But you can still. All can the you seats are gone. All the tables at the bar are gone. It was just too hard. Okay. Much too hard to keep everybody as far apart, and for us to feel comfortable, and for them to feel comfortable as well. Yeah. If but if you want some more some normalcy, I mean, this is Florida. Outdoor places are what we live for. Places that are on the water are actually hard to find. Believe it or not, in Palm Beach County, it's so stupid. Uh, <laughs> look them up online. Blue. We're very lucky. Yeah. Blue Point with an E, barandgrill.com, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, and go check it out. Casey, you guys are doing a phenomenal job, and, and please be safe, and uh, have a big old honking margarita for me, please. <laughs> I and most certainly will. Salt or no salt? No salt and a lobster <laughs> roll. Two. I'm going to eat both of them. You got it. I'm going to Corleone. That will be my I'm dinner today. I'm going to go to you guys for the lobster roll. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, thank you, Taylor, so much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And tell Dennis we said, I mean, uh, Ryan, that we said thank you and, and good luck to you. And congratulations on being one of the first to be able to reopen. And I think you guys are going to do fantastic over this summer. Take I think care. so, too. Thank you so much. I'll pass along everything to Ryan and to Dennis. Thank you. Bye. Thank thanks. you. Okay, you got to go check it out. It's at the um, at the <clears throat> the north end of Dequesta, Blue Point Bar and Grill, live music, the only place in town that has live music. And just be safe and wear your mask and wash your hands and all that stuff. Um, oh, so we're going a little late. This is what we always do. <clears throat> and we always bring in a musical guest. 
because I don't only want to support um, our friends in the restaurant community, but uh, our friends in the entertainment community have been hit real hard too. Uh, my next guests uh, and my final guests are Beth Cohen and John Curtis Rose. Beth is actually in the band Boston. Yeah, that band. She's amazingly talented. <coughs> Excuse me. She actually plays keys, guitars, and does vocals in the band Boston. She's tours with um, with Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees and John Curtis Rose. Doesn't that sound like like a, a serial killer name, John Curtis Rose? Uh, he uh, is amazingly talented too. He's a comedian. He's an accomplished pianist, uh, and he has done the national tours of Wicked and Book of Mormon and Billy Elliot. Well, he wrote this song that we're all going to be able to relate to, and we're going to play it for you, and then we're going to meet them, and they're going to close out the show today. And here it is. This is such a great song. Watch it now, by, uh, written by John Curtis Rose and done with Beth Cohen. Here's Stimulus Check. Stimulus check I got my stimulus check Now that I have I'll never have to work again For 1200 bucks I put on my tux Pour me a drink And turn off CNN Well I never knew How good I'd feel so stinking rich I'm gonna call up my ex-wife and tell her she's a I think I lost her number Stimulus check Got my stimulus check President Trump Thank you and amen Stimulus check Where's my stimulus check Until it arrives I guess I don't get to eat Hey, what the heck? Where's my stimulus check? Three days from now, I'll be living on the street. Now I've been home for 30 days and I'm feeling like a sucker. And every day at five, I watch that orange mother. You better check the mailbox. Stimulus check. Where's my stimulus check? President Trump. Don't you forget about me It's eating out my soul I ain't got no bankroll Stuck inside eternally Stimulus check Where's my stimulus check? Got my stimulus check Still no stimulus check Now that I have I'll never have to work again I'm gonna die in poverty I'm still wearing sweatpants Pour me a drink and turn off CNN I'm watching way too much TV well, I never knew how good I'd feel To be so stinking rich Hey, this isn't funny I'm gonna call up my ex-wife and tell her she's a Bitch, I need some money Stimulus check Where's my stimulus check? Got my stimulus check Got no stimulus check President Trump, don't you forget about me Oh my God. Hilarious. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> it makes me laugh watching it now. <laughs> oh, no, it's just, it, it's so timely. Did you guys ever even, did you get your checks yet? I did. I did. I, that's, why I, I wrote, that's why I wrote it. I, I did. Fine. I hadn't. 
and and I was complaining about it, but yes, I I finally did too. Did you get a paper check, or or did you actually have deposit? Uh, deposit for me. I got I got a deposit. Yeah. Oh, see, I'm one of these yes. people who forgot to even make sure it was deposited, so I'm waiting for my stimulus check. Stimulus oh, check. Oh, stimulus check. Wrong key, but okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> What a pleasure to have you guys on the show today. Thank you. Um, Thank you. This is so much talent in one tiny little screen. It's that side of the screen, not this, not my side. On that side of the screen, <laughs> holy cow, how did you guys meet? Uh, you, want, you want to tell Beth? Uh, yeah, I hope I tell it right. Well, a long time ago, um, we, we, we both went to University of Miami together. Uh, actually, I, I'm a little older than John, so I went first. Uh, we had mutual friends at UM, and that's how we connected with one another. That was a long time ago. A long time ago. So, uh, Beth, is when when Boston is on the road, you're actually with the band Boston. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't realize that there was a chick in Boston. Yeah, well, they, they actually had a, a, a female a, a bass player singer before me who was in the band for let's say a couple, three years, and then uh, she left, and I think they wanted to, to keep a female in there, so that was when uh, that was when Tom Schultz gave me a, a call and asked if I wanted to do it, and I said, of course I do. Amazing, and you, you also uh, tour with uh, Barry Gibb. I do, I do, I've been with him off and on, um, oh gosh, a, a long time, and he's uh, amazing to work with as well. It, it, you know, different kind of music, but really amazing to work with. And you live right here in South Florida, right? I do. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I, this is my home. I love it here. And John, you're you're right here in South Florida as well. Uh, yeah, Hollywood Beach. Yep. When you're not touring, and sadly you can't do any tours, the theaters are dark. And um, I mean, you did a right. lot. You were, we, you were in the pit with a friend of mine, Bob Bowlby. Bob Bowlby up in Boston. Yep. Yeah. He come, yeah, he comes down to Florida. I actually met him in Tampa. We were doing a show in Tampa. Yeah, Bob and I went to um, elementary and high, junior high and high school together. Amazing, yeah. And he's, he's an incredible musician. So you did Book of Mormon, you did Wicked, you did Billy Elliot. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I saw Bob down at Broward Center doing Billy Elliot. So that I was, was, I was in the building. I might have even been conducting. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So what's it like? Now, you guys also do, you gig at um, Casablanca? Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is this like really cool place where you, you, you do like the piano bar kind of thing. Yeah. Very popular. Exactly what we do. I mean, they, it's, it's, it's really a wonderful place. It's been in Fort Lauderdale like 25 years. And uh, yeah, we do a, a somewhat traditional piano bar there. And uh, they have a piano. So people sit around the piano uh, and, my and ask for requests and sing along. That is, it, that is it's great, and we've been doing it, John. I've been doing it for six years together there, and I've been there way, way longer. Um, it's a great place, it's a great venue. And now you can't work, both of you, because of this. We're retired, we can't even take retirement cruises, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> doesn't seem fair, yeah. right? So, see, I, you know, people don't realize, you know, we, we talk about the restaurant industry being hit so hard, but the entertainment industry just as much. I mean. Can you imagine going out to half these bars without entertainment? And that's exactly right. what's happening. And then, so when it gets open in phases, I don't know what phase you guys are going to be in, you know? I, I, you know, I'd say probably last phase because we're, right. we're supposed to pull in the crowd. That's the whole, that's the whole point. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, go ahead. No, they, yeah, they don't. They don't want to pull in too much of a crowd. Right, right. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. So we, yeah. have, we have been in. We have been in talks with Casablanca, and and you know, as the plans unfurl to be able to open, they are going to have the music as soon as they are able to open because it's one of the the traits about Casablanca that everyone knows and loves. And they do have, similar to Blue Point Grill, they, they have a, a large outside area because they're right on the beach. So they can at least keep social distancing with tables and things yeah. like that. And they'll be able to have us there. Uh, and 
bring in people that can still stay far away from one another. So. So in the meantime, you guys did what a lot of other people are doing, taking to Facebook, doing concerts, doing them out on the dock at your house yeah. for the whole neighborhood who loves it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing the whole mm -hmm. thing on Venmo and PayPal. Um, but that's, you got to do what you got to do. And you got to, um, you know, share. There's two things for me that bring me comfort and it's food and it's music, you know? And booze. <laughs> booze. Now, now we're talking. Hey. All right. I've been drinking since 10 a.m. You know, it, it, things, it, it, there's like a certain smell of a food or a certain taste of a food brings you right back to your childhood. You can say the exact same thing with a song. That you hear this song and you're right back in Dee Dee Donovan's mother's car driving up uh, Randolph Road on, on the, in Milton, Massachusetts in 1967. <laughs> And that song for me is Marrakesh Express by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, that's, that's, that's what, that's I, what I, grew up, I, I grew up in Massachusetts. I grew up in Stowe. I'm actually from up there. Oh, see, that's why you don't have the Boston accent, because you're from nah. the, the, the not really you know. Massachusetts part of Massachusetts. That's right. A little far enough out. Yeah. Well, what's next for you guys? When's your next online concert so people can look tune in and find you on Facebook? Uh, we, we do every Friday, we do a live streaming from my Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, 7.30 to 9.30 every Friday. And um, then we, this is our second concert on the dock and it got an amazing response. So so if if all is still kind of wacky like this, uh, in another month, we'll probably do it in about a month or so. And we do it every Sunday, and we can yeah. have at home with our coffee. Right. We, we right. don't want to oversaturate our friends and, and, and the uh, the manatee. The manatee are surprisingly good tippers. <laughs> good. We have to protect our manatees, and our right. manatees protect us back. Right. Exactly. That's right. It's a circle of life. <laughs> I've got your websites up there so people can find out more about you and find you on Facebook and on social media. I love talented people and talented people who make the best of of things with the stimulus check and, and <laughs> with the concerts on the dock. I applaud you a thousand times. Thank you, Taylor. Times. Thanks so much. And uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank yeah. you so much. And be safe, okay? You too. And we you appreciate too. what you're doing too because the local stuff and the food and 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 people really want to know about it. And so we appreciate that from you as well. It's it's great. Well, hopefully, you know, as we progress, we're going to do more restaurants down in the Broward area. We're st I'm starting in my backyard right now and paying more, a little bit more attention to the Treasure Coast because they're actually open. <laughs> so that's kind of weird. But uh, in, the, yeah. in the months to come, we'll... Yeah. We'll concentrate more on on Broward because I don't want to leave Broward out. There's a hell of a lot of restaurants down there. <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure. All right. Take care, you guys. Take care. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. That's Bye. it. Once again. Bye-bye. Once again, we went long, but uh, it's my show, and I can do what I want. <laughs> my name's Taylor Morgan. The show is called Taste Local, and I want to thank Ruby for staying staying overtime once again. And um, Ruby, just fly in for a sec. Hello. Hi. We went we went long again. That's okay. It was a great show. Everybody was really enjoying it. And the comments were coming in, so I was keeping my eye on everything. Good. I appreciate all the comments. I I have my screen like 40 feet away from me. So I, the last thing I could see was somebody was trying to uh, make a reservation for a table for two on 730 on Mother's Day. Yeah, I have a feeling that all these restaurants are going to be getting lots of calls. We're the new, we're the new open table. Right. <laughs> well, Ruby, terrific job today. I mean, we wing this. This is totally live. We wing it. You know, I, I give her some pictures at the be two days ago or whatever, and and she puts them up and she gets the guests on. And we love having you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Well, oh. <laughs> Hold on a second. Like we said, it's live. Yeah. Taylor. Oh my God. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm gonna have to hold it in my hand. That was All really right. funny. I'll be back on Thursday when my guests will be. 
Uh, I can't look at my notes. Um, my guess would be Mark and Franjone and Karen Howe from Pelican Cafe in Lake Park. We will have uh, Melanie and Chef Michael from Cork and Forks Catering. We'll have Paul Michael from My Liberta Delivery Service that does not charge the restaurants a dime. Yay. And oh my God, who's my fourth guest? I can't remember. Oh, Manatee. Manatee something Manatee. The guys that have a thing that's called me. <laughs> This is hilarious. Oh, it's up on the Treasure Coast and they're open and you'll meet them on Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Taylor Morgan from localdines.com. Thank you so much for watching Taste Local. And don't forget, until we eat again, stay safe, stay healthy, support local.